we here? We're here in the Rocky Mountains today. We're gonna talk about the animals that live here and what they do to survive in the winter time. Let's go. I'm Ranger Bree, and I'm a park ranger high up in the Rocky Mountains. Follow me on my adventures as we use nature as our classrooms, and we'll explore how the natural world endures, survives, and thrives in the most wild and untamed ecosystems. Our story begins here at the Big Thompson River. What you're seeing right now is fresh spring runoff from the snowpack up high in the mountains. As Colorado's key water source for the entire year, I love seeing a fresh layer of snowpack. Since Colorado's weather patterns can be a little unpredictable most of the year, it's important for us to have a way to release the right amount of water at the right time. That means by having water locked up in frozen reservoirs, high up in the Rocky Mountains, which we'll show you later today, it will slowly release the water throughout the rest of the year as the temperature melts the snow and ice. Well, you can see where the snow ends up. Let's head up to the peaks of the Rockies to find out where the snowpack originates. tracks. The snow makes it so easy for you to see which animals are actually moving through the area. There's tracks everywhere. Look, that's a deer. There's some rabbits. We got some wildlife. I wanted to take you guys to a really special place up here. Behind this sign are protected wetlands. Within it lie species that rely heavily upon water. So how does an animal that relies so heavily upon the water in the wetlands survive when all of the water is frozen in the winter time? Let's go find out. I'm talking about wood frogs. Wood frogs are amphibious, which means half of their lifespan is spent in the water. So these protected wetlands are due to the fact that it is such a crucial component to their life cycle. So when the water freezes, where do the wood frogs go? They can't migrate like the elk. So within their burrows, they actually freeze. Their heart stops beating, their blood stops flowing, and ice forms throughout their entire body. But they have a trick. They evolve to develop a sort of antifreeze that they release throughout their entire body. This antifreeze is almost like what you just put in your car to make sure your car doesn't freeze in the winter. So through the entire year, they're storing up glucose. What is glucose? It's sugar. So they literally just have a sugar water running throughout their entire body, making their blood nice and thick and syrupy so that this little frog popsicle can start to thaw out in the spring when the weather gets nice and warm. So now that everything's starting to melt here up in the Rockies, it shouldn't be too long before you see some little wood frogs starting to warm up and thawing before they hop back into their natural territory in those protected wetlands. So not much different than humans, there are animals up here in the Rocky Mountains that love, hate, and are kind of just indifferent to a snowy climate. Let's think about it. Not only is the temperature dropping, but the length of the days are also getting shorter too. That means all of the animals that are up here in the Rockies, relying upon all of the flora and the vegetation as a food source, there's not as much sunlight for them to go through photosynthesis. This is gonna impact the amount of food that's available. This means the animals are gonna to have to figure out how to deal with these changes. In the world of biology, this is what we call adaptations. So winter time can be a harsh and desperate time for these animals. So take my friend Marty the marmot here. He's a yellow-bellied marmot. In the winter time, they just wanna close their eyes and wait the whole thing out. So he's what we call true hibernators. Their metabolism slows down so much to the point where they don't eat, they don't drink, they don't even poop. Their body temperature is gonna decrease to the point where it's barely above freezing and their heart rate actually slows to about five beats per minute. This is all so they can conserve that precious energy source. Like I said, winter can be a stressful time of year. So 
these animals are finding ways, finding adaptations to get them through these harsh, stressful, desperate times. So what other animals up here in the Rockies are so desperate to conserve their energy source that they shut down their bodily functions? Let's go take a look over here. So take Barry the bear here. He's a black bear. I know he doesn't look black, but he is a black bear. He's what we actually call a cinnamon bear. He's a subspecies of black bears. He is going to enter a mini hibernation. So unlike Marty the marmot, he's gonna have a mini hibernation that can last from 24 hours to sometimes even weeks on end. Check out their fur. This is some really thick fur. That is definitely gonna keep them nice and warm during their hibernation. And what they actually do is they curl up into a ball, they stick their snout, right in between their elbows and they pull their knees up into a, a nice cozy little ball um, and then they're breathing in towards their torso so any of that water that they're breathing out any of that heat that they're breathing out it doesn't totally escape right so that kind of maintains keeping them nice and warm through their mini hibernation on a nice winter day he'll actually wake up nice and groggy right stumble out of his den to go look for some more food so this mini hibernation is what we call torpor there's other animals that go through torpor too that we'll talk about in a minute. Barry here in the fall time, right? They're so desperate to build up their fat reserves before the, the harsh winter season that they are looking for any food available. They're opportunistic feeders. So in the fall time, they enter a hyperphagia state. Big word, let's break that down, right? So hyper means active. Phagia is going to mean to eat. So during hyperphagia, they're actively searching and eating for food. Hence why I have a berry on this bear box here. So this is a bear food, food storage locker. So the reason we have these bear boxes is actually due to one of the adaptations that these black bears have evolved to have. Check out this nose. Black bears can have a sense of smell that is seven, seven times greater than a bloodhound. So they're gonna be able to smell all of your yummy hot dogs, your yummy hamburgers, your marshmallows that you're cooking over the campfire for up to 15 miles away. That is huge. We don't wanna draw these black bears into a campground where there are humans. We want you to put all of your yummy smelling wildlife attractants into these bear proof food storage lockers. You'll see these all over the country. It's not just specific to the Rocky Mountains. Because of these bear boxes being installed, we actually have documented fewer human bear interactions, which is great. So these bear boxes have not only protected humans, right? You don't want to draw this big black bear and check out the size of these claws. They're massive. Check out those teeth. Uh, so we don't want you as a camper to be harmed by drawing in these black bears. And then also it's going to protect our natural resources being this black bear. Whew, man, this is a lot to bear. You guys, oh my gosh, this is a massive bull elk antler. This is huge. Can you imagine having this on your head? This was a massive bull elk. It's a one, two, three, four, five pointer. This is just one side of it. I would say this is easily 20 pounds. So this is a massive weapon. These bull elk every fall use these in the annual rut. So they try to win the affection of the, the females in the area um, by fighting off other bull elk using their antlers. Sometimes it's just an intimidation mechanism. Other times they actually do go head to head and fight each other using these prongs. Uh, what's pretty cool about this one though, I just saw it, where'd it go? Up here. You can barely make it out, but you can see it's living tissue. That almost looks like the inside of a bone. The male elk grow these every single year. So in the springtime, they're devoting as much energy, energy as they can to grow these for the annual rut in the fall where they're fighting for the affection of the females. You can imagine it being this heavy that they have to shed their antlers. So that's how this ended up here. What we're gonna do though, I'm so glad we got to see this, but we're gonna have to leave it where we found it because like I showed you in that, that close up of the living tissue, this is a really good food source for small mammals like 
uh, rodents and rabbits in that stressful winter time. Imagine that. Uh, I'm surprised that we haven't seen any gnaw marks on this guy yet, but uh, it's a really good source of nutrients during a really harsh time of winter. So we're gonna leave this here uh, so small little mammals can still try to survive this cold period. Wow, I can't believe I found that. <laughs> So elk actually go through a pretty massive migration every year. So when they're done down on the front range and the springtime is coming and the weather is warming up again, they will make their way back up into the Rocky Mountains where all the grasses are available. So it's a pretty big migration. Most famous migrators are birds. My favorite bird are hummingbirds. Up here in the Rockies, we have beautiful hummingbirds. And what's really interesting about them, not only do they migrate to survive the winter, but think about little hummingbirds, right? They are burning so much energy, fluttering their wings all day long. It consumes a ton of energy. How is something that's metabolism is running so fast supposed to survive nights that still actually get pretty dang cold up here on the Rockies? Remember Barry the bear? He goes through a mini hibernation called torpor. Hummingbirds are professionals at torpor. So instead of it being a, a week long mini hibernation, they go through a nightly hibernation. So their way of surviving the cold drop of temperatures, even in the summertime here in the Rockies, is by, again, slowing down their metabolism to the point where they're almost dead. This is to conserve that precious energy, right? Until the morning, when the sun rises, they can start to warm up. And it can take up to about 20 minutes for those little hummingbirds to stretch out their wings and start burning their energy like crazy, flying all over the place again, looking for that nectar. Well guys, fresh snowfall in the Rocky Mountains is gorgeous. However, like we've learned, winter time is a harsh, desperate time for these animals that call the Rockies home. So to survive this harsh ecosystem, there's three things that they can do. They're either gonna have to adapt, they're gonna have to migrate, or they die. So next time you're up here in the Rockies, I want you to stop and think about all of the things that the animals that call this place home have to go through, sometimes just to survive one day. Well, I'm gonna go back to my heated truck and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Happy hiking.